we'll start with this 2 inch by 6 inch piece of 3 16 inch brass bar and we'll hold it down with super glue on this block of aluminum. Notice the grooves I've machined in the aluminum to allow air and moisture to get in and cure the super glue. Here I'm lining up the bar with the back and left edges of the aluminum block and we'll put some weights on there and wait about five minutes for the super glue to cure. Here comes the Tormach Superfly, which will cut off the factory finish and leave a nice shiny surface on the brass. I'll touch off on this post-it note, which is of known thickness, to position the Superfly just above the surface of the brass. And then we'll begin passes over the brass. The first pass will barely touch the brass at all and then we'll lower the head a few thousandths and pass again and so on until we've completely surfaced the material. This will be the final pass it will completely cover the surface and make it shiny all over. Notice that the trailing edge of the Superfly is also cutting the brass a little bit. That shows that my mill is not 100% trammed in, but it's an advantage in this case because the trailing edge makes a very, very light cut and leaves an excellent shiny surface finish. Now that we've finished with the Superfly, I can change tools and put in the engraver. Uh, I now have the power drawbar, so this is a much more convenient operation than it was for last year's project. By next year's project, maybe I'll have the automatic tool changer. This tool is a 1 inch ball end mill, which we're going to use to cut a nice groove around the edge of each coin. The ball end mill is not perfectly designed for this kind of slotting, so we're going to go very slow. This is 20x fast forward.
this is a 1 8 inch flat end mill and the first operation will be to create a very shallow pocket in the center of each coin where we'll glue a wooden inlay to make the face Now that we're done cutting the pockets, the same tool will go on to cut out the outline of each coin. I chose to use this kind of slotting operation instead of milling away all the brass from outside the coin. I believe it's a little bit faster. Here you can see some of the waste material broke away because I have just barely enough material to cut these coins. That could cause problems. Now I'm putting in a chamfer bit to break the edges all the way around the perimeter of each coin. At this point the coins are mostly held down just by the glue. They are partially attached to the waste material by a very thin amount of brass. But that amount of brass may be as little as zero depending on the tolerances involved. So we're relying on the super glue to hold the coins down through this step. Now this side of the coins are done. We just have to separate them from the aluminum block. I tear off the waste material using the pliers. And then use a sharp edged scraper to disconnect the coins from the aluminum block. I'm going to clean up the bottom corner of each coin anyway, so it doesn't matter if they get a little dinged in this process. Now we'll start to work on the reverse side of the coin. In the vise, I have a vacuum table which I built for engraving circuit boards. And in the vacuum table, I have one of those circuit boards out of which I've cut a coin-shaped hole. Now I can simply drop the coin into the hole, and the vacuum will suck it down flat, and it'll be parallel to the machine. A little tap with a hammer to make sure it's sitting flat. And I'm able to go immediately to machining, starting with a z-axis alignment of the facing tool. Now I'll run facing passes until the coin is shiny all the way across. Now a tool change to the ball end mill. And we'll engrave a line that matches the one on the obverse side.
Now a tool change to a chamfer bit so we can clean up the corner of the coin once again. This is a pretty fast operation so I won't fast forward it. One last tool change to put in the sharp engraver. Now turn off the vacuum table and we can pick up the completed coin.